Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back to game number two of IDWT vs uh, NSD Fodge. Uh, they are LIV Fodge just because they're playing at the Liberty LAN, uh, currently taking place at the Emperor's Palace in Johannesburg. Uh, welcome back, you are joined here with myself, Five Demonic, and I'm joined by Pac-Man, aka Packy. Welcome back to the cast. The green team's banning some. I have completely spoken without speaking, Packy, but thank you and welcome back to the cast. I wasn't holding my, my push to talk key down. Sorry. Uh, I was wondering where you were. Not a problem. Um, yeah, welcome back, game two. Yeah, so NSD Fudge laying down the hurt in game one. Solo mid Earthshaker Five against the Ember Spirit, so turning out to be a more than formidable matchup against that hero. Good rotations from the support, Reserve so. Time. Pretty much secured the early game, and from there on, they just uh, slowly choked their slowly choked. Well, I say slowly. It was a 17-minute game, so things got out of hand yeah. pretty quickly. Team pick. <laughs> I said 30 minutes, but they did it in half the time. So the ES, I don't know, too strong. Yeah, ES, uh, ES deciding to go for the the max damage build. No, just one on the stun, and then maxing the W so that you get as much physical damage as possible. So Flame Guard doesn't really help against that. Um, Shackles is quite effective uh, to keep hold him, hold him in place, but obviously you can then just follow up with a stunt. So it uh, was an interesting matchup. We'll see what uh, we'll see what they do in game two. The Ember Spirit is in the pool, remaining. so uh, full on jukes with the first pick this time. Yeah, we might see oh early Venno. Um standard no, bands pick. also coming out, except maybe for that Shadow Demon IDWT really not wanting to play against that SD again. Maybe a respect ban. Um, it could be just uh, uh, NSD Fudge like heroes like Potom and things that like setting up with heroes like Shadow Demon that pair really well with that hero. Um, last game was also a, probably a, a good good determining factor in uh, in that ban. Also, yeah, but probably not the most not the most uh, usual Five ban. We probably remain. usually see something like an Ancient Apparition in that spot. Even a Centaur War Chief is worth the ban. So, ooh. We're going Dynasty interesting in game two. We've got a Crystal Maiden. Love me a Crystal Maiden pick. We're going to see what they want to follow it up with here. Um, Crystal Maiden, obviously the aura is just invaluable. She has the power to level in the bush with Frostbite really early. So that is uh, always good. And uh, her ulti does insane amounts of damage in team fights if she manages to get it off in the right spot. Yeah, it's all about positioning with that ulti because you become really vulnerable. Uh, it's very similar to like uh, Bane's Fiend Grip, mm -hmm. where if you ulti, you're just uh, really remain. stuck in the mud. So, but see him, brilliant, brilliant pick. Um, Venna, I don't know if that was such a such a hero to get on a on a very first pick. I would have liked to have seen maybe uh, like say Ember or a Centaur up there. Um, because they've given them quite a fairly open pool to choose from. I think that that NSD might be up to something. I know that they've been practicing leading up to this land. I've got make my day on my friends list, so I've I've seen what they've been up to. We're gonna see Disruptor second pick. Ooh, so things are pick. Disruptor seeing a lot more play recently, um, especially on the local scene. Uh, some play in the disrupt in the in the international scene. Uh, the Russian teams seem to favor him quite quite nicely. Uh, he's been buffed quite well, so his glimpse has cooled down, got uh, a little bit less, and uh, Thunderstrike, they changed it up a little bit, the way it works, Radiant team and uh, they oh gave God. him uh, Arganum Scepter, so I, I told you, full on jukes up, so this is a, I'm uh, gonna call it now, I'm calling it now, this is a solo middle Ogre Magi. Bad dudes banning someone now. Yeah, so they're playing some really unorthodox uh, mids here, this is clearly a uh, pocket strat, as you say, something I must have been practicing. This um, is something that happened the other day, um, and it's something that happened in the... Oh gosh, what was it that I watched? Banning someone now. I will tell you now, and if, if, we see a, if we see a Meepo pick here, I'm actually going to lose it, because this was a Fnatic draft that came out the other day in a... It wasn't, it wasn't a Captain's mode, it was that other mode, the Captain's draft. Oh, okay, yeah. And uh, put Hanny on the solo mid, on the Five solo mid Ogre Magi. Remaining. And uh, No Tail picked up a, a hard support uh, on Meepo, which we just oh, saw actually in the start of the final, so YYF did it. And uh, they they crushed. I mean, spoiler alert, but they crushed. Well, so, No Tail's Meepo, I don't know if that's such a spoiler alert that, that, that they did crash. I mean, he's considered probably one of the best. Uh, well, this is YYF, YYF from DK. 
against against IG. Dire team pick. Oh, okay. But uh, bands coming out. We've got the uh, Venomancer band, so they and the Pugna band. So that's two two good bands against the Ogre Magi. Um, Venomancer is a really good mech carrier. Uh, has that natural uh, magic resistance and is generally quite a hard hero to kill. Plus, uh, his slow with the Crystal Maiden Disruptor could easily get two or three kills in a in a team fight. So, good bands coming out from them. They follow uh, IDWT followed up with the Ember Spirit and Nature's Prophet, Five so they don't want to be rat dosed, and uh, they have no interest in seeing that uh, seeing that Ember Spirit play either. So, Reserve they time. will want to pick up a core hero here. Uh, I wonder if they're thinking. If if they're in on if they're in on it if they if they know what I know, <laughs> we'll see that now. But yes, I, I really think they will either pick up a mid or a core hero over here as well. Um, the nature's prophets. Oh, there's the offline. Um, Radiant team pick. Clock. Clock's good. I enjoy a good clock. Now, if if they if they're clever, I actually think they put the clockwork middle. He, I imagine that he would match up really well against the Ogre Magi, being able to zone them out. I mean, Malay on Malay is uh, is generally favorable for Clock, just because he has the cogs and could just make sure that he spams those cogs, gets rid of the mana. I mean, it's no hassle to him. He can get up an early bottle, get up at early six, and go ganking. So, could be a potentially good pick from IDWT. They could always run in the off lane as well, remaining. and they could always pick up another middle. Uh, Reserve time. But as for the moment, uh, I imagine that it'll probably most likely be offlane. So we've got a Juggernaut pick, so I think this is the makings of... That could be an aggressive tri-lane. Um, yeah, I'm looking at, at those three at the moment, and that has all the makings of First Blood right there. All the makings of First Blood on that Disruptor. Mm. Or Crystal Maiden, both uh, early picks. Easy, easy picks if they get caught by a Venomous Scale. Crystal Maiden, not the fastest of heroes without boots. Yeah, no, she's uh, she's seriously slow. Um, I think I think IDWT Five seconds they need to pick up something here that that's going to show sort of that they're Reserve not going to want to only play around the mid game here because they they really they've got sort of like a core hero in clock but uh, they're gonna need to pick up something else here quite strong um, maybe a centaur I feel for them might might do them well especially against uh, like a ogre and, and jugger yeah and I oh, uh, I wanna uh, okay they're gonna pick up a Luna I was I was suggesting maybe even Radiant something like a Wraith there. thing giving that lifesteal to the the rest of your team plus he's such an annoying hero just because you have to bring him down twice and uh, if Venomancer and Ogre Magi just cast all their spells, by the time he comes back up again, he, you know, they can just go in. Yeah, you could probably bait out a Jugger ult uh, just on Wraith, uh, Wraith King and, mm -hmm. and sort of use your ulti just to waste Jugger's ulti, pretty much. Yeah, and, so... uh, yeah but the Luna coming up, there's the Centaur, but the Luna, um, great man. pusher, but I think, I think they're going to need another... Another hero just to help with like uh, killing killing creeps really quickly, uh, if they were to look to push any sort of early towers here. Yeah, in terms of in terms of the tri lane, um, it actually is all right just because they have two range supports, now. so it's going to be a triple triple uh, triple ranged uh, tri lane. So that's going to output a lot of damage just because of the aura on on Luna. So the mo that is always something to think about, but uh, Central one. Central Warren is getting picked up quite late in these drafts. It's really surprising. Five seconds remaining. Considering that uh, most international teams are putting him in the first four bands. Reserve time. Or four yeah, picks, that's you know. True. He's yeah, it's extremely popular at the moment. Um, offline, he's just so strong. Yeah, and he's just a. Uh, uh, he was. His old ulti used to give him strength, but instead they naturally put that into. His natural strength gain, I think it went up by 0.4 strength per level Dieting from what it previously pick. was. So he, I think he loses out on 12 strength in the end from what he previously had, but he get, has an amazing ulti instead. So Centaur has been buffed and buffed again, and finally is people have realized that this hero is really strong. And uh, so, and I'm really glad that he's seen play because he's one. He's in he's in my top 10 Dota heroes definitely. 
He's one of my favorite. Definitely, yeah. I mean, his ulti now, as it stands, basically gives your entire team that initiation speed that you need. Mm -hmm. um, if you want to get the remaining. ogre in closer, you want to get the the Veno in closer for a Gale, because I mean, Gale is such a long range. So, I mean, with the with the central ult and and the Veno Gale, I mean, that's brilliant initiation mm -hmm. right there. Because once you've got the slow down, Jagger can get in, ogre can get in. Um, Seem to obviously follow up with the stun and, and, and what's that? Double blade, double edge. Double edge, yeah. Um, yeah, and, and all that damage together and just looking, uh, obviously with the exception of clockwork, but just looking at, <laughs> at IDWT is that the heroes are quite squishy at the moment. And with that amount of damage coming out from full on jukes, um, they're going to need to start looking at maybe an early mech, but, but who do you put that on? I uh, see. I, I would most likely put it on the clockwork, if anything, just because he's going to be he the hero in the front lines in the team fights. So he will be most likely in the place where Mech needs to go off. He might have to go for mana boots then instead of the face boots. So it may complicate his build a bit if he decides to go Mech. But they last pick a Kunker, so that's most likely going to be their mid hero. They could still, yeah, I think so. Yeah, they'll definitely go try lane with the Luna. Um taking clock to the off Five so yeah that'll be the remaining. mid um what is i think crystal maidens uh frostbite will be the only really sort of initiation spell for kunkka uh, unless he's really really good with his torrents i would love to see something like a um disruptor and luna just going into the off lane with the disruptor pulling and just staying safe and a dual lane middle with the crystal maiden kunkka just making sure that idwt have the best early game as possible the crystal main will be around yeah, to pick up the runes, levels, and, will, yeah. and they'll shut down whatever whatever decides to go middle, which looks like it might be a troll warlord. Yeah, you say that with a with a fair amount of uncertainty and surprise, but uh, OBI, another another team here in South Africa, um, I know they play them troll warlord quite a lot, and you know when you have well. It's not exactly his ulti is not exactly the best at the moment. You know, if he's if he's with heroes like maybe Tiny and and Tree and so on, then then yeah, he, he works out well. So it's a bit of a strange pick for me at the moment. But he's not he's not not being chosen in in SA games. Uh, the teams are picking him up. The vision I think is going to be Bloodlust plus the Troll ulti, just to give as much attack speed as possible to the entire team of uh, of full on Jukes and. Having done that combo nation before, the attack speed is frightening. But uh, anyway, well, imagine you had an invoker in there with the mm -hmm. lack of Exactly. Yeah. There's there's a lot of combinations for that kind of silly silly aura sort of strat, you know. But anyway, going into game, we've got uh, game two of uh, NSD uh, Full On Tricks versus IDWT in the Liberty Land at uh, Empress Palace in Johannesburg uh, on the side of. Uh, NSD full on cheeks. We've got Cloud uh, playing the. He had a magnificent game on the Timbersaw last game. He's going to be taking up the Central War Runner this, this time. Uh, make my day. He's going to be taking up the Venomancer on that uh, on that hard five support. Circus Ninja is going to be taking up the Ogre Magi, which is a hero that I love to see being played. And uh, Santo is going to be taking up the Troll Warlord, who's going to be middle. And Raping Ninja is going to be on the Juggernaut. And it looks like that's going to be an aggressive tri lane heading towards top. On the side of uh, IDWT, who are currently smoked and heading towards the enemy jungle to put some wards down, we've got uh, Korax on the clockwork, we've got Artful, who's going to be taking up the Crystal Maiden, we've got uh, Dazza, who's going to be hoping to have a better game on the on the Kunkka, we've got Miggy, who had a bit of a rough time uh, in the early game last time as well, also uh, looking probably looking to have a bit of an easier time this time on the Disruptor, and uh, we've got Gara taking up the carry once again on the Luna. It's interesting to note that none of the teams have pulled their mid by the looks of it. The battle? The yeah, um, but good early wards coming out. Um, uh, so uh, they've got two. There just to give clock that space. Yeah, we've got two on cloud, two two pool tangos. But that is something that that is that is really quite really good and should be should be utilised almost every game. Supports just pulling a tango into the mid. Um, so he doesn't have to buy his own tangos. Just ensures that he gets up a gets up an early bottle, um, and it's generally quite standard nowadays that the the mid yeah. doesn't buy any tangos whatsoever. Just gets pulled uh, one or two, maybe one from the off lane. But uh, we've got an aggressive try lane here, and 
I'm not sure what IDWT are going to do about it. Gar is not even interested in getting close to this combination of heroes. So, Raping Ninja is going to have free farm. I mean, if we look at the last hits, he's already on top, and I imagine that he's going to stay that way. Yeah, I think so as well. Uh, IDWT, Gara, and um, and Mickey are actually just way too squishy. Are they they will be first. Oh, Mickey may be in some trouble. Ooh, oh, this almost, almost, Man almost. Manages to get around the corner just in time. And, uh, and a nice aggressive ward there um, in lane, just to spot out the rotation because they don't know where CM is at the moment. She's been she's been stacking, or. Yeah, no, she, yeah, yeah she, 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 she stacked. She stacked and she's taken a wolf for herself, so... She might be in trouble here. Yeah. Miggy's gonna she... walk around and just find the Venner and the, and the, uh, and the Ogre Magi that Gale goes off, and uh, Miggy, I think, is... is first blood. Hey, getting blocked out there first by blood. Make My Day. And I didn't miss it. Um, my nice, Juggernaut Jug picks up. So he's got that kill and these early game last hits. So a really good aggressive try lane uh, start for FOJ. Yeah, the, one of the great things about Ogre Magi is he's extremely tanky for an interior. He actually has one of the... <coughs> excuse me. He has one of the highest interior in games, I mean, strength gains in the... natural strength gains in the game. I think he's top three, or he's tied for he's tied for third. So probably was like Chikira or something. Fun fact: uh, I believe it was Tree Doom and and Ogre Magi, if I'm not mistaken. But Santos having a good time in middle. He's at twelve last hits, only three last hits for Daza. He's got two up on the Tidebringer, but he's gonna need more levels on that before he's gonna be able to contest. They're going on Gara, yeah. Gara's. Dead for rights, and Miggy may be in some trouble as well, but it doesn't look like uh, Circus Ninja's going to have a stun, so... He's got a mana pot, I imagine he's going to pop it. Just to yeah, continue... Yeah, combination the... just proving a bit too strong there. Um, like I said, the Gale, the stun, and uh, Raping Ninja coming in with the Willing Blades. So it's, it's just too much damage for the amount of health that these guys are running with at the moment. Yeah, I mean, it may be better just to... Send the Luna middle, and send the send the conquer top just because he has the ability to at least uh when he hits creeps do some damage free damage to the tri lane because they're not I, neither of them are winning their lanes but i feel like could be at least getting a little bit more out of what they currently currently do i mean the loon is sitting, sitting at zero zero and it's almost four minutes into the game oh she's picked up her first yeah. kill so good good times ahead but raping then looking oh, to come around odd wolf in trouble odd wolf is dead to rights there's going to be a, a spin if need be. They're not even going to spin. There's no need. Never will you see my face. Um, Kunker not actually having a very good lane mid either. So maybe that swap up is what they need because Troll Warlord, if you see, is on 23 last hits, mm -hmm. and Kunker at a not so healthy four. So maybe yeah. the switch up is what just just what they need. maybe get the range in mid uh, to go up against Troll. Kunka decided to go for boots instead of his uh, bottle first, which I think is got to be detrimental. I mean, he's sitting, he's got a TP and 260 gold, but he's nowhere near that bottle. Um, if he'd gone bottle, I think he would have been a lot more survival if he'd come to the top lane, just because he could just spam his spots and hit with a Tidebringer, and that's, I mean, it's a decent amount of damage to anyone else in that lane. I mean, they don't have that much HP. But as it stands, yeah, he's just, uh, he just doesn't have any regen, and he's sitting middle, and Sansa is just spamming, uh, spamming whirling axes. And they got a smoke rotation coming in mid as well, so Dazza is in a bit of a trouble. I don't think he knows it yet, uh, but the missings should have been called out. And the stun's going to go, gonna off go now, on. Uh, make my days, he's going to land the gale. Sansa is just going to follow up with uh, whirling axes, I and that's... Uh, that's Kunker down, so FOG off to a magnificent start here, 4 to 0, I mean if we look at the 5 minute graph, I'm pretty sure that we're hitting close to a thousand gold a minute, and we are, uh, in terms of advantage, so Cloud, we haven't even haven't even looked at in the bottom lane, he's just having a swell time here, um, Clockwork's doing okay, he's got 16 last hits to the 20 of, to the 20 of uh, Cloud, but uh, Cloud I imagine would be just fine, Korak is going to be, have quite a lot of trouble taking down a center wall runner. But Santos on his yeah, way but he's down approaching here. level six now, and he's two hundred gold away from mm -hmm. his mana boots. Uh, Trolls actually just rotated in there. I don't know what he's doing there. Anyway, um, 
but I think once he picks that up and he's level six, uh, they'll need him. They'll need him to initiate and, and start getting some kills. Raping Ninja may be in some trouble. No, he's just gonna spin and get away. Just to spin, spin it under the uh, the hold. I quite surprised that they just turn around and get some hits onto him. I mean, Raping Ninja was by himself, and the spin he had to use the spin to get out. So a majority of it was used defensively. So that could have had the potential to have a kill there. Yeah. Um, FHJ is set, setting up for a gank here on Korak. Radiance Middle Tower is under attack. Yeah, I'm, I'm afraid for, for Korax. Yeah, the stun's gonna go off. Gale, I mean, we've seen this movie before, and I imagine the ending's gonna be the same, and it is. Uh, Juggernaut is gonna get a solo kill top uh, using a spin. He's got an Omni Slash now, but he decides not to use it. He's gone just stats? Spin and, spin and stats? Yeah. Yeah, he didn't really need the heal. I mean, his supports were zoning out uh, Luna and them just mm -hmm. so much he didn't need it so stats could pick up and here comes an Omni Slash and that's a free kill and uh, Raping Ninja is sitting at 5 and 0 he's almost a kill a minute yeah I don't think they could have asked for a better start uh, uh, in game 2 I'm not sure where IDWT go from here um, I think Korak needs to get up he's got his 6 and he's got his okay I thought for a second that he hadn't taken his hook which would have been a uh, Absolute tragedy, but I think he should. He's just TP'd bottom, which means that he's not going to be able to TP top. But I think he I think should try and get a really kill course of action. Ninja. Yeah, yeah, definitely. And I think the the only really course of action here at the moment is to get everyone sort of together, use that clock, get the initiations in, and sort of take the team fights to them at the moment because oh, they're ganking yeah. power. I mean, if you look at Troll now. Yeah, their ganking power is just way too strong. As you say that, uh, they just come around the tower and destroy two heroes. I call it call it full insight. So they watched the they watched the hard hitting as it happened. Dyer's bottom tower is under attack. But yeah, so it looks like FOJ are grouping up to take this T1 tower. Korak's gonna join them uh, join them up here. He's he is here with the Crystal Maiden, who's level three. I mean, she would do good just to go and get some levels in the bush. I mean, there's no one really on the side of. Uh, of IDWT that's gonna push it all and it will secure some some wards and some vision for their forest which I think is desperately needed. They've got the one ward up here but other than that that's their only vision on the map but they've got two of them coming around here it looks like they might spot out Circus Ninja. Hook goes off on the uh, <laughs> onto Vena double, and, cog. Uh, double cog followed by a pirate boats which is gonna come in and that's a really good engagement for IDWT yeah, there was. I think FOJ sort of looking to gank um, Daza up again there in the mid, but just getting caught out there, and uh, there's an extra level for CM. She'll be happy with that. Yeah, I mean, any levels any levels for CM and uh, are going to be happy ones. So that's going to get 900 gold no, up onto, onto the time. clockwork. But uh, I see a Blink Dagger pickup happening on uh, on the center Warchief, so he's got his Blink Dagger it's 8 minutes into Thanks. the game. With yeah, he's those, been uh, farming it up lovely down here. With those tranquil boots, 45 for 8 in terms of uh, kills, uh, he oh, is 0 0 1, so he's. Uh, Raping Ninja gets another solo kill top, using the Omni Slash to bring down the. Oh gosh, kills are happening all over the show. Luna goes down, sends a war over there. Yeah. Cloud showing off that blink with the. Uh, you just went in there and stunned, and obviously with the Ogre. Uh, and then a follow up. Uh, Gara really didn't have much to do. He was, was a bit down too deep though at the moment. But you know, you didn't know that they have such an aggressive board up there. Yeah, I mean, Cloud is quite low. It looks like that. Uh, there's a hook though. They're just always so short. 149, 150. So he's got the hook if he wants it, but he's not going to be able to cogs afterwards, which I think is really what they want. But it looks like mid Daz is going to be in some trouble. Santo comes in behind the tower. There is a TP coming in. Clockwork's going to be here, but. He's still got no mana, so... Santos running yeah, up phases. towards the rush, but Artful, is he going to be in trouble here? One, uh, one willing axis goes off, and Santos is just going to TP. All the TP gets cancelled by Clockwork, and uh, the cogs go off, so it looks like Santos is actually going to give up a free kill here. Is dealing quite a lot of damage, Koko just feeds, and the uh, NSD are up here to, to try and revenge their, their friend's death, and... It looks like Korak yeah, might go down here. Get out here. If these guys get out here, I think that they've actually won that. Uh, taking down Troll is so important for them at the moment. 
Now, unfortunately, Coco went down, but a, a kill on the troll, I think, is, is more important. Uh, Luna staying alive is, is even better. She's now got 600 gold up on her. But as we go into the 10-minute graph, uh, let's look at the golden XP graph. And the XP graph, we've balanced out at about 5,000, so it looks like the map is stabilizing a little bit. In terms of gold, it's continuing to climb into NSD's favor. It's now sitting at almost 10,000, just short of 10,000 gold. So they're almost uh, at 1,000 gold a minute. It looks like Graving Ninja is actually going to go for a Battle Fury, unless he might go for a Lothars? The hook option's available here if they want to quickly jump in that Venno. Raven Ninja is standing very aggressive to compared to the rest of his team, but Korax is not really in the spot to to hook him. But I'm not sure the hooking would be the Boom, best situation now that uh, Santa has picked up a a haste so he's going to be get, able to get into the fight. Uh, Ogre Magic's got one in Bloodlust, so he can help his friends out in terms of moving speed a little bit at the moment. We've got see the Bloodlust going off into Santa Radiant's now. Top towers who presents yeah, a, they're going to take that tower with that old larger version of the uh, of himself and. Uh, Juggernaut's uh, ulti is going to go in, it's instantly going to slay the, the, the Centaur, and looks like Miggy's in some trouble here, Santo's going to run in behind the tower, he's got a haste rune on him at the moment, and uh, Disruptor's going to go down, and here the hook go off, Raving Ninja's taking a lot of damage, Gar is still alive, but he's fighting, but he's got no mana, so he's just hitting as much as, he, and he may be able to kill Santo here, doesn't have any mana, doesn't have a magic wand, so he's not going to be able to get anything back here. So, yeah, I can't believe Korax actually got out of that one alive. He was on tower. like Everyone, quite go, literally go. one HP from from the Venal. Yeah, um, messy engagement from for both teams, but at the end of it, uh, FOJ pick up uh, three kills. There was the support plus the Kunker, but Luna once again stays alive. So I imagine that will. Be Rot close row, to her trades. Yeah, I think I think for IDWT to have any chance of coming out the mid game alive, and that's to get up their core items. It's mm -hmm. it's so important right now, and they really need to have the space. But how do you give them the space? Um, do you use the clock? Do you use sort of I don't know. I don't know. I think the most important thing at the moment is to get that disruptor to level six. Um, just so that they can smoke gang with the two supports plus the plus one, like a clockwork, and uh, just cull something, uh, whatever they see. I mean, they know they know. Yeah, more. IDWT's uh, uh, team fights is it's, it's so good if you if you look at their ability. I would have loved to have seen two levels just on the X marks the spot here instead of oh Cloud is going to blink in he's going to stun out Korax who's immediately going to get caught out. Uh, Luna's ulti is going to go off. Cloud's taking a lot of damage. He might go down an extra beam to use uh, goes down and that's going to be Cloud going down. Uh, Artwolf takes a stun and he's instantly just going to get gived by a DD a DD Santos turning to be too much and the supports uh, of IDWT go down. Luna once again surviving managed to pick up a kill in that fight. Dyer's bottom tower has fallen. Yeah, so Luna actually <laughs> doing well in these team fights, coming out alive and uh, saving up his bucks. But I think, um, you know, we caught a little glimpse of IDWT's good sort Dyer's of team fight spells there. The ship came in, hit two guys, was a brilliant ship. You've got the cogs to sort of lock down whoever you need to lock down. You've got Disruptors also with uh, his sort of electric field thing. The team fight's really good. They they got to get it off. They need to be the ones initiating. but. But they keep getting jumped on by, obviously, the initiation on the Centaur and then the follow-up with uh, sort of Trolls ulti and, and the stuns that are coming out of the likes of Ogre. So I think IDWT need to sort of turn it around, start smoking, and like you say, get Mickey up to level 6. Just hit level 5 now, so one level away, and hopefully we can see some big, strong team fights soon. Yeah, um, Static Storm is never to be underestimated by by any means, the ability to shut down. Circus might get caught out here if he's not too careful. Yeah, LIB are, they have a strong, I mean, FOJ have a strong stance in this forest, but Cloud is just running towards the enemy team. He's spotted out four of them and does absolutely, seems to not care at all. He's picked up a hood, so Raping Ninja once again gets a, a oh, but he gets hooked by the, excellent hook from Korax. The spin's gonna go off, he may be in some trouble. Raping Ninja is, Trying to do as much damage as he can, but he actually... Oh, his ult! Managed to get the Omni Slash off, and uh, looks like we may actually have a team wipe here. Ra oh, that's going to save Raving Ninja. Oh. Yeah, nice the glimpse, save the from glimpse from uh, Disruptor saved Raving Ninja there. He was taking hits from the tower. 
Raving Ninja did, did pick up that uh, Shadow Blade, by the way. Dyer's bottom tower is under attack. Yeah, not only was that a four man kill, uh, there's the GG. I would have called it as well, probably, because yeah. I mean, it would have been tier two, two here, yeah, it would have been That's rush afterwards and then push up. Like. Victor, Victor, so, well played there to FOJ. Yeah, so FOJ are going to take this series 2 0. Uh, this is the Liberty Land that's currently taking place in Emperor's Palace in Johannesburg. You've been well pl played by both teams. I will be following LIB into round two shortly, so. I'm not sure if Packy wants to join me for that, but he's welcome to. I've been joined here, obviously, by Packy. Thank you so much for, for coming along to cast these games. Thanks for having me. Yeah, I think I'll be around for round two, if you'll have me. I'm there. Excellent. <laughs> uh, which should hopefully be sometime soon, because we had a fairly late start. And uh, this has been Demonic. And uh, if you want to follow me, you can follow me at Demonic Goes Gaming on Facebook. You can follow me at Demonic Goes Gaming on YouTube, or Demonic Today on YouTube, and Demonic Today on Twitter. Uh, thanks for watching and we'll see you soon.